Hey everyone, it's Mikey Mike Mike here and in today's video, we are going to be talking about algae and how you can prevent it from overtaking your system. So as you know, I like to keep my aquariums in pristine showroom condition. So if you're a brand new reefer, I hope these tips for you today will help you to create a showpiece tank that you can be proud of. And if you're a seasoned aquarist, I hope these tips can be shared with your friends or you can perhaps adopt some of them to bring your tank into a condition that you are personally proud of as well. So why is all of this important? Well, personally, I enjoy coming home to a good looking aquarium because A, it just makes me happy. But the second reason is because when my friends and family look at the aquarium, they also enjoy it as well. And that really brings in so much more people into the hobby. So if you're here to join in the discussion, I wanna say thank you. Let's jump behind the camera and let's go. First tip that I have for all of you when starting up a new aquarium is something that you can share to your mates as well. If they're starting up a new one is curing rocks. Really simple, cure the rocks in fresh water, in RO water, and it pulls out a lot of those nasties at the beginning. Now, of course, if you're starting off with live rock from the ocean or from a system that's already run up and running, then that's not necessary. But if you're starting up with dry rock, I recommend curing it or at least bathing it and washing it and, and spraying it. So what I did with these rocks is I high pressure hose washed them. I cured them in RO water. I then also added calcoaster in there to pull out the carbonic acid out of the rocks as well. And ultimately uh, that was a crucial step in ensuring that no nasties grew out of the rocks at the beginning. The second thing, was I made sure that the sand in this aquarium before I went in there went through the exact same process. If any of you have ever opened up a dry bag of sand before, you'll notice that inside of that sand is just a little bit of dust, but also a lot of silicates as well. And so when you wash it and you stir it, you'll notice that there is a lot of muck and a lot of sludge that just gets cleaned out. So one, rocks, two, sand. That's, that's how I start off with the cleaning process before the tank is even filled with salt water. All right, so what happens when we fill the aquarium with salt water? Well, here's something that I wanna to advise to a lot of people is the first thing is don't be tempted to blast your aquarium with lights. Um, I see a lot of aquarists when they add in some corals, they blast their aquarium, aquariums with lights at the beginning. Now, if you've only got one coral in the aquarium and you've got three lights at the top or two or three lights that are blasting down over 300 watts of energy into the tank, that coral is probably getting way too much light. But the second thing is your whole aquarium is getting way too much light as well. So don't be tempted to, to blast the lights, keep the lights low or put all your corals at the beginning in one spot and make sure that the lights are maybe intensified in that one area as well. All right, the next tip, and I think we're up to four now. Uh, the next tip is when I added water into my aquarium, I made sure that I also added bacteria. If you think about our aquariums, they're like a, a, a big giant city. And so bacteria is constantly fighting for real estate space. And so is algae. And so it's this delicate battle of algae versus bacteria. So what do you want to grow in there? You want the healthy bacteria to be growing in this aquarium. You want to make sure that you feed that healthy bacteria. So how did I feed? Well, from day one, I started liquid carbon dosing. So you can, of course, liquid carbon dose with vinegar, with vodka, with sugar, or you can use some advanced polymer products that actually feed the good bacteria in the system. And that's highly recommended. I think of carbon dosing more as feeding bacteria as opposed to removing nutrients. All right, the other thing is you may want to consider adding a good type of algae into your system. So in the beginning, some reefers don't actually know that this is a good way of preventing the bad algae from covering the rocks is by covering the rocks in a good algae and that is coralline algae. So what I did was I went to my local fish store I asked them for a, uh, a almost a corn chip size uh, scraping of coralline algae, that nice purple and red colors. And I just crushed it all up and placed it into this aquarium and let it seed all over the aquascape. 
Now the beginning, my Coraline algae grew a, a really funky gray color, but over time it started to grow and transform into that purple and it covered this entire aquascape within a matter of one or two months. So that was a good way of just staving off and fighting against any of that nasty diatom or nasty hair algae that can grow over the aquascape. Now I did go through a little bit of an ugly phase. Um, I went through roughly around about one or two weeks of an ugly phase and that was mainly just diatom algae. And so what did I do in that time? Well, I added 40 trochus snails. I added around about 20 turbo snails. I also added in roughly 18 zombie snails and I also added in eight hermit crabs as well. So my next piece of advice is of course, go nuts on the cleanup crew. Believe me, you cannot overdo the cleanup crew. Well, maybe you can, but to some extent, this aquarium with four foot of, of real estate from left to right, I'd say roughly around about 60-ish snails had plenty of food to eat. And believe me, within one day, all of that diatom algae was gone. And so it was this constant battle of diatom algae growing and then snails eating it up immediately, algae growing and snails eating it up immediately. Which brings me to my next point. What's the secret in keeping this aquarium clean? Or what's the secret in keeping algae at bay once you've got your system established? Well, a lot of people ask me, how do you keep your glass clean? And it's really simple, I clean it. Um, that's, that's quite a, quite a I know it's a quite ironic, but Keeping the glass clean is super important to ensuring the rest of your aquascape is clean. Now hear me out here. Uh, if you clean your glass, if you make sure that the, the sand is, is turned over, if you make sure that your pumps are clean and your, your pipes or your return pipes are clean, then the snails are gonna spend most of their time on the rockscape. They're going to be doing their job by actually cleaning your rocks, which you don't wanna go in there with a toothbrush all the time. They're gonna be doing their job by cleaning all of the, the bases of your corals. They're going to be doing their job day and night. And it means that you can just focus on cleaning the glass and making sure that that part of the aquarium doesn't act like one giant algae turf scrubber. Because if you think about it, the four walls of our aquarium are large surface areas for algae to grow and it almost acts like an algae turf scrubber where algae continues to reproduce and then spread throughout the aquarium and then continues to produce and spread throughout the aquarium. So in the beginning stages and later on, keeping the glass clean, especially that back glass, uh, which we look at all the time, is super important to ensuring that algae stays out of the system. All right, so the next piece of advice, and I wanna make sure that this is something that people think about when they are more into the mature ages of their aquarium. And that is doing a lot of the work before you see things going out of hand is going to prevent the algae from really exploding. So some things that I noticed, maybe there's just a, a tiny bit of algae stuck to a dead skeleton of, of a, a part of a coral, or maybe there's just a little bit of algae that came on a frag plug. And so I make sure that I clean off the algae manually. I make sure that any sort of exposed coral skeleton is cut off and taken out of the aquarium as well. And that means that the amount of space for the algae to grow is vastly limited. Let's talk about UV now. So UV, um, what did I do with this system? Well, in the beginning, I actually didn't run UV for about uh, a month, but then later on, I actually started to use UV to ensure that the reproduction of the diatom algae, or you know that dusty algae that grows on the glass, doesn't come back as quickly. So UV can be a powerful tool for ensuring that algae doesn't come back as rapidly. However, I don't see UV as a prevention tool. UV will not stop algae altogether. And so let's round it all up. Let's talk about how in this aquarium, we started off with curing and cleaning. We ensured that there was good bacteria. 
we make sure that the system was constantly cleaned manually to ensure that the cleanup crew could do their work on the aquascape. And then ultimately we decided to, or I personally decided to ensure that any piece of algae that was growing was taken out immediately. So a little bit of prevention goes a long way. All right, everyone, you made it to the end of the video. I want to say thank you so much for listening in on the conversation. And I guess I want to finish off with this last reefer thought, and that is, if you want your aquariums to be better than 99% of the aquariums out there, then here's something that I was taught. Do the things that 99% of people don't do. And so if you're the type of person who cleans your glass, if you're the type of person who keeps up with maintenance, if you're the type of person who plucks out algae, then you're the exception. And I really wish you all the success. Now, of course, if you're the type of person who sits back and cruise control the whole way down the road, that's perfectly fine as well. Of course, at the end of the day, our aquariums are ours to be enjoyed by us. And so I hope today's video gave you a little bit of an insight. And if you haven't subscribed so far, please click the subscribe button down below, leave a like. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave a comment because I'm more than happy to engage in the conversation there. Remember, I'm new to this whole YouTube game as well, and I'm here to learn. So let's continue the conversation. All right, cheers everyone. See you next time.